With qualification to the Champions League knockout stages secured and momentum starting to swing back in our favour in the Premier League, the January transfer window is soon to be opened and I've got my eye on one more player who might be able to bring us to the next level. But as ever, if you're enjoying the series so far, please feel free to like and subscribe and let's get into today's episode. After a bit of a difficult start to Season 2, things are starting to swing back in our favour. We've got a six-point gap at the top of Group C in the Champions League and just one point will cement our place not only in the knockout stages but also making sure that we finish top of this group and having found ourselves in the unlikely position of mid-table we've managed to creep right back up into the final Champions League spot we now sit in fourth place and we are now just six points behind our title rivals from last season Manchester City now bearing in mind we only have one more month remaining until the start of the January transfer window and we've still got over 80 million pounds to spend looking at my team and looking at the starting 11 I still think there is one key area that I need to improve now on the right hand side of defence Sasha Bowie hasn't exactly set the world on fire so far this season but with him rated 83 and with him only being 24 years of age, I still have high hopes for the young Frenchman. Technically at 82 rated, Ollie Watkins is one of my lowest rated players in the starting 11, but with him being in fine form in the Premier League this season, scoring 7 goals in just 11 appearances and 8 goals in 14 appearances in all competitions, I am in no rush to try and move this young man on. And so whilst I do have full faith in this young man, Jacob Ramsey, to come good and potentially be a star of the future, I really think at the moment if I want to try and take this team to the next level, midfield, especially in the centre of the park, is is definitely somewhere that I need to improve. Yuri Tielemans has crept back into my thoughts and crept back into the starting 11 over the last few games, but his form has been a bit in and out, and he's not someone I can truly rely on again to try and take us to the next level. And whilst John McGeehan is the captain, the leader, the legend, and leader of men in terms of his status here at the club, once again with him being 30 years of age and only 80 rated, I don't quite think he is going to be the man that is potentially going to lead us to Premier League glory. And so as you can see, I've taken the time to shortlist some of the best young talent right across Europe, and some of the best young talent whom I think can come in and make an immediate impact in my starting 11. As you can see, there are one or two of these who aren't yet fully scouted, so I will have to leave it until the very start of the January transfer window before I make my decision as to who I'm going to be bringing in and who's going to be plying their trade at Aston Villa Football Club for the last six months of the season. Until then, though, we've got the small task of getting a point away from home against Bayern Leverkusen in the Champions League. Unfortunately enough for me, even with a much rotated squad, we do manage to do that. Right at the death, Jimenez scores a goal in the 76th minute to secure the single point that we needed as we draw away from home 2-2. And with one game remaining in the group stage, we secure our spot top of the very group and we secure a comfortable path to the next round of the Champions League. However, with our attention now turning to the Premier League table and with us trying everything we can to try and hunt down our title rivals, Manchester City, we are greeted with a wonderful opportunity as it is the former Premier League champions and the reigning Premier League champions who we do head off to the Etihad Stadium to face off against in our very next next game and our first game of this brand new episode. It's the usual starting 11 that take their place on the field today with only one major change and that is Konza coming in at the heart of my defence to partner Tapsoba with Pau Torres unfortunately picking up a knock and he will end up dropping out of the squad altogether. Well this is an absolutely huge game here, a game that already only with a handful of games played so far in this season we must get three points from, otherwise if we end up losing we will find ourselves nine points behind the Manchester City team that we do not want to be chasing towards the back end of the season but well, it's been a fairly quiet opening 15 minutes here at the Etihad Stadium but this is a game already having only played just a handful of games so far in the Premier League that we must get three points from because if we do not and we if we end up losing to Manchester City we could be in real trouble we could find ourselves nine points behind them and that is going to be perhaps an insurmountable lead that we might not be able to challenge but just as I say that we now try and bring the ball forward as Jacob Ramsey tries to play it in field ends up losing it Ollie Watkins takes it and in the end I got my strike all wrong I tried to tackle didn't realize that he managed to win the ball back eventually and then in the end he got the shot all wrong it was a bit of a tame one and Edison said thanks very much Kevin De Bruyne for Manchester City of course the danger man their absolute icon in the centre of the park leading the charge as always for the Manchester Giants as McAtee now plays a lovely ball into Haaland who strikes and for some reason unlike him he ends up blazing what is a wonderful opportunity over the bar he had all the time in the world he got it all wrong and much to my relief it remains nil-nil taps over into a stooping Yan Nice short pass into Konza. Konza with a first time ball into Zaniola. Lovely little layoff into Jacob Ramsey. He's twisting. Ends up losing it to Ruben Diaz. But Estupinian tried to win it back. He does win it back. And he cuts into the centre here. Lovely pass into Zaniolo. Zaniolo tries to feed it into Ollie Watkins. Who strikes with his right. And Ollie Watkins absolutely leathers. A wonderful first time strike into the back of the net. 30 minutes on the clock to give us a 1-0 lead here at the Etihad. Well, it was a beautiful piece of build-up play. One touch here. One touch there. A lovely pass into an unmarked Ollie Watkins. And he 
he had acres of time and space to pick out the right area of the goal and he did just that. Look at that. It was perfect. Gave Ederson no chance and he gives us a one goal lead. Lolly Watkins is on absolute fire so far this season. There is just no stopping the Englishman. That is his eighth Premier League goal in just 12 games. Absolutely brilliant return for the experienced Englishman as he knocks on the door for an international spot. Moussa Diaby though now picks it up on the right hand side. Goes past the defender. Really nicely done by the Frenchman. Goes past two defenders. Brilliantly done. Whips the ball in. Gets the cross all wrong. And that's a big opportunity and a big let off for Manchester City. Konza with the free kick. Nice little short one into a Stupinian. And Stupinian, unlike him, goes and gives the ball away. And that was really poor from the Ecuadorian. You don't hear me say that too many times on this career mode. As Jao Cancelo now tries to bring it down the right hand side. Ends up playing it back to Ruben Diaz. Of course, the danger man, Kevin De Bruyne, finds a wonderful pass into McAtee. He goes back into Rodri. And Rodri blazes his strike over the bar. What on earth is going on with the Manchester City shooting boots today? Nuno Mendes to take a short free kick for Manchester City as they try and build out from the back here. And the left back does a brilliant job of driving down past one of my defenders and lays a lovely ball off to the former uh, sorry, the former Aston Villa man, Jack Grealish. It's into Phil Foden who's just come on as a sub and Sasha Bowie eventually hacks the ball away. Stupinian with the throw. Short one into Zaniolo who goes and gives the ball away to Phil Foden. Manchester City certainly starting off this second half far better than they ended the first half. Jack Grealish though trying to wriggle his way around the uh, challenger by defenders. Does a really good job but who else? That man taps over to come across and win the ball back and now he releases Mr. Diaby down the right-hand side and the Frenchman surely has the pace to burst into the Manchester City penalty area. Can he find a ball across into Ollie Watkins? Brilliant piece of defending from Ruben Diaz. Yao Cancelo. Out to Rodrigo on the right-hand side. Gets it back, though. And he's going to try and find a ball into uh, Hurling Haaland. Doesn't manage to. Instead, plays it down the line into Rodrigo again. As Stupinian comes across to try and cover. Doesn't do a good enough job. Eventually, though, does manage to bring the ball back. And that is another brilliant piece of defending this time from the Ecuadorian. Much like he has performed all of the rest of this career mode. He steps up again. But Jacob Ramsey almost gave the ball away. But now he plays a lovely pass into Kamara. We've got the overlap here on the left-hand side. And we find Zaniolo, who could try and burst down this left-hand side. Instead, cuts back. Back in as he knows he hasn't got the beating of pace for Jao Cancelo. Instead plays it back into Kamara. Kamara with a lovely ball into Musa Diaby. And Diaby on his right foot gives us a two-goal cushion here at the Etihad. Well, I thought the opportunity was going to come on the breakaway down the left-hand side. The attack seemed to lose a little bit of momentum. But in the end, it was our central defensive midfielder who found a wonderful pass to unlock the Manchester City defence. And it's Musa Diaby, the electric Frenchman who's on hand to strike into the Manchester City net. It's 2-0 Aston Villa. Zaniolo now. He's got Jacob Ramsey running ahead of him. What on earth is going on with the Manchester City defence here? Jacob Ramsey in the box. Hasn't got the pace to get away, but instead plays it back to Ollie Watkins, who puts it wide. Well, that was the opportunity to put the final nail in this Manchester City coffin. And with just 10 minutes remaining, anything can happen here against the reigning Premier League champions. But just as I say that, Zaniolo does a brilliant job of winning the ball back high. Drives into the penalty area. He's looking for the cutback. Finds it. Tielemans. Tielemans on as a substitute with his left foot and practically with his first touch of the entire game goes and give us a much needed three points and gives us our third goal of the game. What a brilliant way to make an impact from the bench. Well, lovely stuff. It was all due to the hard work of Zaniolo. He drove into the box and he just waited and waited and waited until he got to the byline, found the ball back to Tielemans in space and Tielemans on his weaker foot with a fabulous finish. Edison had no chance into the bottom right-hand corner. He is ecstatic, so am I. It's 3-0. Rodri for Manchester City. Vettina now in with a big, big challenge. Is it going to be four, potentially? Into Jimenez, who's on as a sub. He tries to go past the defenders. And in the end, it's a good enough job from Diaz to just shift him too far out. He blazed it against Edison. It's cleared away. Zaniolo, though, picks it up. This has been all Aston Villa. Arguably one of our best performances all season. Throws it in the box. Looks for Diaby. Finds Jimenez. Oh, on the volley. He puts it wide. I can't believe it. He will be devastated that he wasn't able to find the back of the net. But it does not matter because the referee, much to Haaland's disappointment, blows the whistle for full time. I'm absolutely ecstatic. I salute the travelling support. That man, Yuri Tielemans, came on as a sub. He clearly listened to the words that I gave him at the start of the episode. He bucked up his ideas and he chipped in with a brilliant goal to give us a huge three points as it finishes here at full time. City nil, Aston Villa three. Not only is it a solid display and another clean sheet against Manchester City, but it's a massive win and 
and one that brings us to within three points of Manchester City, who've now dropped down to second place and brings us to within five points of the now new league leaders, Arsenal. Yet another fantastic performance from this man, Edmund Tapsoba. He has been an absolute revelation at the back for me so far this season and a brilliant cameo performance off the bench from this man, Yuri Tielemans. Whilst I don't still think that he is at the required level to take us to the next stage in our development, he's a brilliant option to have off the bench. And if he continues with performances like that, he will be doing a brilliant job for me for the rest of the season. However, just when I think things are going swimmingly, Santiago Jimenez, my reserve and backup striker, is yet again meddling in the media and apparently absolutely fuming on the sidelines. And he's come knocking on my door yet again, demanding to get more game time, saying it's doing him absolutely no good in his career. But with a hectic schedule as we head into the Christmas period, he most certainly will get his opportunity. And it will start with us getting a 3-0 thumping of Leeds United at home and with Jimenez getting on the score sheet. His goal was sandwiched between a Jacob Ramsey early goal and a late one from Musa Diaby. And in spite of that man, Jacob Ramsey getting sent off in the 78th minute, we still managed to secure another huge three points. We backed that up with another huge win. This time, courtesy of a very late winner in the 88th minute from Leon Bailey as we come from behind to beat Tottenham Hotspur Football Club away from home 2-1. Our final game in the Champions League stage sees us thump club Rouge 4-1. Douglas Luiz, Jacob Ramsey and Nonto getting on the score sheet twice before we see out a brilliant run of games with another thumping this time 3-1 at home to Crystal Palace courtesy of goals from Diaby, Ollie Watkins and Sasha Bowie and it seems like all it's taken is that run of games for Santiago Jimenez to all of a sudden have his mind turned around he's delighted with the level of game time he's getting in the Christmas period and I am delighted with his performances and hopefully expect that for the foreseeable future a wonderful unbeaten run has seen us lift ourselves up to third place in the Premier League table and now we sit just three points points off of Manchester City in top and just two points behind Arsenal in second place. And with the London Giants about to become our very next game and our last game before we head into the January transfer window, this is going to be an absolutely huge one that is potentially going to have massive ramifications to the title challenge. It's a game that both teams will be eager to get the three points from and a game that neither team will be desperate to lose. The fans are excited. I am very excited. Let's get down to business at the Emirates. As you can see, it is a return to my usual starting eleven with the likes of Martinez in goal, Sasha Bowie at the back with Tapsova, Torres and Stupinian making up the back four, Kamara, Vettina and Ramsey starting midfield, Zaniolo on the left, Musa Diaby on the right, and Oli Watkins will be hoping he can continue his fine form as he leads the line for us up front. Gavi Jesus, nice pass into Odegaard, short one into Thomas Partey, back into Jesus. He looks out wide for Saka, it's been a brilliant start so far for Arsenal. Big challenge though from Pau Torres, and now Vettina can bring this one out of defence, can he find a ball over to the left hand side, no he can't. Well blocked by the main man, Declan Rice, and now he tries to bring it through midfield. Other oh, step overs, lovely stuff from the Englishman. In the end, it's his other central defensive midfielder, counterpart, who wins it ball back. And now we can break with Vettina. He goes out to the left hand side to Zaniolo, tries to go infield, looks for Ollie Watkins, really nicely done. Ollie Watkins, though, looks for a ball out wide to the right hand side to Sasha Bowie. He drives into the box, cuts it back for Ollie Watkins, who strikes. And in the end, it's a bit of a tame one and an easy one for Aaron Ramsdale. Well, what a start here inside the opening 15 minutes. Both teams going head-to-head -head here, toe-to-toe. -to -toe, desperate to try and get the first goal and put themselves in the ascendancy. But so far, it is us who have come closest. But just as I say, that over Odegaard sorry, goes and wins the ball back really nicely from Jacob Ramsey. And now, Jesus, nice little reverse pass into the path of Saka, who's just danced around taps over. But a stupid Yan comes across. Really done. Really well done by the uh, Ecuadorian. And he plays a nice pass into Jacob Ramsey. Ramsey, lovely ball into the feet of Ollie Watkins. But he ends up losing it. Declan Rice wins it back. Ollie Watkins, though, tussling with him. Now Sasha Bowie has it down the right side. Plays it into Vettina. He has been heavily involved so far. This is a brilliant counter-attacking move. Vettina into Musa Diaby. Strikes on his left. And he strikes straight at Ramsdale again. Second time. And it's another let-off here for Arsenal. Jesus coming deep to try and collect the ball for Arsenal. Feeds in Thomas Partey. Ends up going back to Gabriel. He finds Zinchenko on the left-hand side. And he's going to try and burst down this left-hand side. He goes past Vettina with ease. Jesus, lovely little dink back into the path of Thomas Partey. Gets it back. Oh, Sasha Bowie tried to come across, but he did do a good challenge in the end. Vettina manages to step away from Thomas Partey into Ollie Watkins. Ollie Watkins gets caught up, though. Bundles away, though, and manages to win the ball.
ball back. Neither team can gain control of this game. It is end-to-end -end stuff. Neither team able to really fashion any clear-cut opportunity so far, though. Odegaard ends up losing it, and now it's Kamara to bring it forward. Vitina ends up losing it to Zinchenko. My word, for two teams that are battling right at the top of the table, the quality so far has been incredibly poor. Perhaps the two teams are cancelling each other out. Now Jacob Ramsey into a lovely ball into Zaniolo. What a pass. Unbelievable. The Italian strikes, and he blazes it over the bar. Oh, we cannot believe it. Another third let off for Arsenal. How many opportunities are we going to blow here? I am absolutely furious. It remains nil-nil. Bowie again. Down the right side. Cuts the ball infield for Kamara. He lifts it over to the left-hand side to an unmarked to Stupinian. First time. Lovely pass into the path of Jacob Ramsey. Ramsey, though, is going to look to the right-hand side into Sasha Bowie. We are carving Arsenal apart here. And almost Thomas Partey with an own goal. I tried to feed it right across the six-yard box. Thomas Partey managed to get a touch on it and he almost fed it into his own net. But fortunately for Arsenal, he only went out for a corner that I'm going to take. Jacob Ramsey throws in, looks for the head of Zaniolo, couldn't find it. And once again, it's hacked clear by Arsenal as the referee blows for half time. Well, it's been a game of low quality in the first half, but a game where we've had a couple of opportunities that perhaps we really should have scored. Saka somehow only gets away with a yellow card there. What a ferocious start to the start of this second half. Let's check out the replay here. Let's have a look. Oh my word, surely, surely that is a blatant red card. He made absolutely no attempt to play the ball. He was miles off. And somehow the Englishman gets away with one. Jacob Ramsey, short pass into Zaniolo. He's got the overlapping run of Estupinian. And he finds the overlapping run. Estupinian to float it into the back post. Looking for the head of Mr. Diaby. The smallest man on the pitch couldn't quite get to it. Ramsey will pick it up though. And he finds Estupinian yet again. Tried to cut it back. Good piece of defending from Tommy Asu. And he releases that man, Saka now. He tries to go down the right side. He goes past Pau Torres. Those two are having a ding-dong battle so far in this second half. Saka continues his run. This time it's Tap Sober who comes across. Who else? Unbelievable yet again. Zaniolo, lovely, lovely lofted ball over to the right-hand side. And Sasha Bowie now into the path of Vettina. Vettina's going to look for Musa Diaby, who's just straight offside. 60 minutes on the clock, and it is time for call for the reinforcements. Four changes I'm about to make. I'm going to try and see if I can spark some life into an attack that hasn't been able to find the back of the net so far. Rice gets it back from Declan Rice, and Gabriel has it again. He's been chased down here by Kamara, who's the highest man pressing up the pitch. Brilliant play so far from the central defensive midfielder, but unfortunately, Arsenal's passing has undone my midfield. Nemil Smith-Rowe now is going to go one-on-one -on -one with Sasha Bowie. Lovely pass into Thomas Partey. Of course, who else is it? But it's taps over to win the ball back, and now release Musa Diaby. Jimenez on as a substitute. Diaby finds a ball into Vettina, and look at the space Vettina's got to drive into here. Has he got the pace? to get away from the Arsenal defence. Vettina strikes. Oh, my word. He gets it all wrong. Oh, we cannot believe it. What on earth? Another huge opportunity. Oh, Vettina. Talk about drag your shot wide. A horrendous strike. And another fourth big let off for Arsenal. Taps over. Lovely pass into that man, Vettina. And Vettina now is going to try and look, sorry, this time into Musa Diaby. He finds Kamara. Kamara's up! And it's rebounded off of Saliba to give us a 1-0 lead with just 12 minutes remaining on the clock. Well, I said earlier, Kamara has been arguably the best player on the pitch for me so far. And he's found himself the most advanced, storming into the penalty area and trying to lash a strike. It looked like it was going straight into the path of Ramsdale. But Saliba coming across to try and block inadvertently ended up sending it into his own net and we finally take a deserved 1-0 lead here at the Emirates into Sasha Bowie down the right hand side into Jimenez on as a substitute he turns finds Vettina Vettina with the ball into Leon Bailey to put the game to bed and he does just that Leon Bailey on as a substitute and just five minutes after the first goal we have completely undone this Arsenal defence for a second time more beautiful build up play and this time there were several players involved but it was Leon Bailey on as a substitute to apply a wonderful finish and a fabulous finishing touch he just lifted it over Ramsdale gave him no chance and he gave us a two goal cushion we lead 2-0. Nice pass out to the left hand side to Zinchenko. Just under five minutes remaining here for Arsenal to try and somehow find a route back into this game. But is it going to be too little too late as Jimenez wins the ball back off Saliba who's having a bit of a mare in the last ten minutes. And now Tielemans has it. Oh my word. Are we about to undone Arsenal for the third time? Oh my word. It's off the post and it's a huge opportunity miss for the Belgian. But it does not matter because look at Gabi Jesus how frustrated he is as the referee has decided to blow for the full time 
whistle. Leon Bailey coming on as a substitute and making an instant impact in a jam-packed five minutes at the back end of this game. Full time here, it finishes Arsenal nil, Aston Villa 2. And there is no doubt that the super sub definitely inspired a late win for us. And it was a late win that extends our unbeaten run to now nine matches in the Premier League. Plus, it allows us to leapfrog Arsenal into second place. And now, we only find ourselves three points behind our title rivals from last season, Manchester City. However, despite that victory and morale seemingly being in a very good place, huge misses in that match from the likes of Vitina, and a really big one at the end from this man, Yuri Tielemann, shows that perhaps we do still need one more central midfielder to try and take this team to the next level. Unfortunately enough, with just under £80 million still left to spend, and the January transfer window now officially open, it is time to get down to business. Now, as I said before, I have taken the time to shortlist some of the best young and up-and-coming talent right across Europe but as I have also said I do want someone to come in immediately and make an impression and fit right into my starting 11 and so with that in mind I have made my decision as who is going to be the next player to apply their trade in an Aston Villa shirt he's a man who's racked up well over 150 appearances right across Italian football and now in this career mode has moved to Tottenham Hotspur Football Club to get a taste of life in the Premier League but with him keen to join a club who genuinely have potential opportunity not just to win the Premier League itself but also the Champions League and the FA Cup, he is ready to take the very next step in his career. And that is why the Italian Davide Fratesi is ready to join Aston Villa in what is going to be a huge, potentially club record deal on this career mode as he joins Aston Villa Football Club for just over 50 0.5 million pound. The 25 year old Italian has his best years ahead of him and as you can see he's got pretty decent stats right across the board. He's press proven and he is someone who will be able to slot straight into my starting 11 and hopefully immediately make an impact. And after smashing Southampton 4-1 at home courtesy of two goals from Watkins and a late one from Jacob Ramsey, he is going to get the opportunity to make his full debut away from home against Anfield. It's a baptism of fire for the Italian but one that I'm confident he can rise to the occasion on. There is a little bit of fatigue that has crept into the camp and Fratesi is one of those men who is struggling but I do feel like now is the right opportunity to give him his debut and perhaps he can at least last for about 60 minutes. As for the rest of the starting 11, Martinez starts in goal, Matty Cash on the right, Tapsoba, Torres and Estupinian at the back, Kamara, Vitina and that man Fratesi in the centre, Nonto starts on the left hand side, Diaby on the right and Ollie Watkins starts up front. What a game, another two teams that are vying for not just the Champions League, for football places but also the Premier League title as well and they will be both eager to try and see if they can get the three points here today as Vitina brings the ball now forward brilliant start from him and now he's going to try and lay this one into the path of Musa Diaby a lovely ball forward into the Frenchman's path and he takes it onto his left shifts it looking for an angle it ends up falling for Vitina Gravenberg though with a huge double challenge to release Liverpool and now Gakpo has it has he got any options up ahead of him instead it's Kamara who comes across with a challenge taps over feeds it up and now Diaby to to release that man Kamara who finds himself getting into more advanced positions these days I don't know why but uh, I'm not going to complain because he's doing a really good job and he finds a ball into Diaby and just like that the Frenchman gives us a 1-0 lead inside the opening 11 minutes it is that man Kamara again who's heavily involved again pressing from the front and we say thank you very much as we get an early lead well Liverpool all over the place at the back just didn't know how to clear their lines and they are made to pay Diaby steps up and just looped a ball over the on-rushing Allison who just could not get there quick enough. Brilliant start. Brilliant goal. It's 1-0 Aston Villa. Oh, the howl being chased down. It is that man, Fratesi, with a brilliant challenge. And now he releases Wilfred Nonto. And look at this. He, the young man, has got brilliant acceleration. And he drives into the box. I'm surely going to try and look for the cut back into Ollie Watkins. It's blocked by Lenormand. And Liverpool are living life on the edge here. It's almost 2-0. Andy Roberts to try and bring this one forward for Liverpool down the left-hand side. He feeds it into Pedro and Gonzalez. He tries to go past two players. Does go past two players. Brilliant stuff. He flings it across into the back post. A stupid yam with a big head to head clear. Lovely pass, looking for the overlapping run of a Stupinian, and he finds him. A Stupinian checks back into Fratesi. He turns. Lovely stuff to get away from the Liverpool challenge. Feeds it into Kamara. Kamara into Ollie Watkins. Ollie Watkins into the RB onto his left. Lined up a strike, and it was a brilliant interception by Endo in the end. Gravenberch into Pedro Gonzalez on the left-hand side. End to end stuff here at Anfield inside the opening 35 minutes. Pau Torres wins it back and then gives it away just as quickly. Andy Robertson down the left-hand side. Pau Torres comes across to make amends for the earlier mistake. Brings it out of defence as the referee blows for half-time. Well, this has been such a good episode in terms of results so far. And we've got 45 minutes to extend our unbeaten run. Can we do it? 
Time will tell. Manny Cash coming in field to collect the ball. Lovely little touch now into the path of Musa Diaby. And the Frenchman's got the pace to burst past the Normand into the box. Cuts it back into Ollie Watkins along the floor. And Allison with a big save. 56 minutes on the clock though. And I have now decided that the time is right to take off Davide Fratesi. He's had a hard-fought battle in the centre of the park in the opening 56 minutes. He's done his job. He's helped us secure a 1-0 lead. Jacob Ramsey will now come on and see if we can try and add to it. Bettina, though, has it now, and he bursts past the challenge of Andy Robertson. Cuts it back in. Looking for Musa Diaby on his left. And just like that, an immediate substitution and an immediate goal. And it's Musa Diaby with his second. Our oh, second of the game. It's 2-0 Aston Villa. The crowd go absolutely wild. They know just how important this result is. What a brilliant, brilliant response to a substitution. Liverpool seemed like they just fell asleep. One man who did not fall asleep was Musa Diaby. And it was a lovely finish this time on his left foot. And he gave Alisson no chance for a second time. Klopp is furious. 2-0. Short pass into Mo Salah. And he just burst past Pau Torres. He's got the base to get away from the Spaniards. And now Stupinian's frantically trying to get back to put a challenge in. Headed away, though, by Matty Cash. Deputising on the right-hand side of defence in place of Sasha Bowie. Ollie Watkins now has the chance to try and release the ball forward into Wilfred Nonto. He waited for the perfect time to play it and it was the perfect pass Wilfred Nonto in the box Wilfred Nonto on his right to extend our lead to three goals and we lead here at Anfield 3-0 and is that game set and match here in Liverpool an incisive counter-attack a wonderful ball from Ollie Watkins and Wilfred Nonto a man who has struggled for game time this season in his first start in I cannot remember how many games has made an instant impact a lovely curling strike Round Allison gave him no chance, gave us a 3-0 lead here at Anfield. That's was Stupinian. Liverpool's heads have well and truly dropped here. The press is all over the place. They can't get the ball back from us. They are just leaving holes wide open in their defence here as Ollie Watkins feeds a lovely ball out to Manny Cash. Unmarked, he bursts into the box, looking for the cutback. Almost found it, Lenormand, with a last-ditch challenge just to get away there, as otherwise it could have been 4-0. Now Liverpool, though, are going to try and see if they can hit us on the counter-attack. It's a pass into Gakpo, just as I say, uh, sorry, Liverpool were leaving holes open. We've left holes open. But eventually, though, Pal Torres comes to our rescue. He's under a bit of pressure. But a manager's just about to hack it clear into the path of Wilfred Nonto, who ends up losing out to the centre-back. Virgil van Dijk for Liverpool. Five minutes on the clock here for Liverpool to at least get a consolation goal in front of their own fans. But Jacob Ramsey wins it back in the centre of the park. And now Musa Diaby releases Vettina. And Vettina has the opportunity to try and play it across the Norman, though. Came across and was in the right place at the right time. A brilliant block as Alisson hacks it clear. Into Tapsoba. Tapsoba over to Estupinian. Acres of space here. Nonto tried to feed it across. Managed to win it back. Ended up losing it though. But it doesn't matter because the referee blows for full time. Will Liverpool have their head in their hands? They cannot quite believe what has happened here at Anfield. But I can tell you exactly what has happened. That man, Musa Diaby, has run riot here in Liverpool. Two goals helped Aston Villa Football Club to a 3-0 win here at full time. A frantic start to life for this man, Davide Fratesi, who put in a decent shift in the opening 55 minutes. But all the plaudits are going to go to this man, Musa Diaby, now up to 87 rated, 10 goals in just 19 Premier League appearances. The Frenchman is on absolute fire this season, and long may it continue. His goals has helped keep us in second place in the Premier League and cut down Manchester City's lead to just one point with 18 games remaining in the season. Hopes are high that Aston Villa can go one step further this year and win the Premier League. And with the FA Cup about to kick off in our very next episode. It is one that you definitely do not want to miss. But that is it for today's episode. Thank you everyone for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it and I'll see you again next time.